I'm not a hater. No, sir. I just don't like what some of you are doing. Yes, sir. Let me give you an example. These hip hop artists. Peace. I want to take a little time out to uh, make this little video. Take take some time out of what I was doing. I was kind of busy. I made a post yesterday with a picture of Young Thug wearing this national hat right here. And uh, I didn't realize that the that the post was the picture that I posted, which you guys can see it right now, is uh be so controversial. A lot of silliness is taking place. Uh, brother named Pal Lavi Rod or whatever the hell his name is, and uh, Ray Bond is on Facebook talking a little crazy because number one, the brother is wearing the national hat, which my man Martin F. Muhammad was able to get to the young brother, young thug, and uh, this is turning into a conversation like, why is the minister meeting with young thug, and you know, he a homosexual, and y'all calling him a faggot and everything, and, and you know, it's really like this, man, it's Ramadan, and I'm trying to be cool, because I really can say something to y'all that's like, really like, that need to be said to you, but I will say it like this, and I guess I just have to make, make this day up, you know what I'm saying, I just have to... At the end of Ramadan, I just have to make this day up because I really can't help but say that y'all really be on some bullshit. Now, I'm in the I'm in the trenches for real, and there's brothers and sisters throughout this country just in this in the trenches for real. When I say in the trenches for real, there's real conscious brothers who's really like dedicate themselves to to doing this movement. You got F, uh, Feed the People (FTP). That's an organization that's really in the trenches helping the people. You got. Um, Guerrilla Republic, which is really down with that hip hop movement, and they really in the trenches trying to get at the people. You got uh, the RBG. There's some respectable, reputable RGB uh, folks, revolutionary but gangster, red, black, and green, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, there's the Black Panthers, New Black Panthers, Old Black Panthers. You got the NOI, you got the FOI that's in these trenches for real. And what's disheartening and really some bullshit is how so many of you who ain't doing nothing. You ain't about nothing. You ain't you ain't in the trenches. You ain't doing nothing. You all you're doing is sitting on Facebook, and you don't do you don't do a damn thing to help your people. You ain't doing nothing, but you always criticizing the moves of another man or another woman who's doing something. Now, me personally, I wrote a book on Hip Hop Nation. I know what's going on as far as who controls hip hop, who controls rap music. I know these rappers. I know a lot of these brothers that's uh in the trenches and, and, and you know doing the hip hop thing, they rap thing. But a lot of y'all who talking shit don't re you're not in no position whatsoever to judge anything that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is doing. First of all, you on some bullshit just by opening your damn mouth. So some of y'all going as far as saying that there's photo ops. Let me tell you how this shit works, but you wouldn't know this, right? Because don't nobody want to take a picture with y'all. Because you ain't in the streets, you, you don't have no name, you ain't doing nothing, you're just sitting up on the keyboard banging on the minister and banging on the movement. Let me explain something to you. I totally disagree with the type of music the Young Thug and others like him make. And I damn sure don't like his represent, representation because there's people connected to him that follow him. You understand? But whatever his reputation is and whatever thing he's demonstrating in the hip-hop world or the rap music world, he's making money. He's getting paid by certain people or writing a check to do. And he's getting paid for his representation. And he's being controlled. Because he's not in control of his business. Now, dude is leading people down a certain path because he's being led down a certain path. We all victims. This is a war. This is a major war, and all of us are casualties of war. And I don't that don't mean we ain't supposed to speak truth to power. And when brothers is on that bullshit, we ain't supposed to check them. When sisters be on that bullshit, we supposed to check them. But when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has a meeting with these brothers and sisters and he sits down with them and y'all take it as a photo op or some way to where the minister is on some money thing, let me explain something to you. There ain't nothing that you can give the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that he ain't got. He done turned down millions and billions of dollars from people who got it. So he ain't selling out. He in this to win it. And those of us who are with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we in it to win it. Let me tell you how this thing happens. I was just recently in L.A. We sitting there, the minister is teaching. Guess who come in? Kanye West. Kanye West in the game is sitting front row seats while the minister is giving it up talking about revolution, talking about 10, 10, 15. And he ain't taking no prisoners. And he's speaking straight truth to power. And he's he letting the world know is justice or else. So the minister 
is in Houston. It's raining and storming. He leaves Houston. He goes directly into L.A. and deliver a message. Right? Before then, he was on the East Coast. You seen him do the Breakfast Club interview. You seen him do the Sway and Tech interview. And there's other things that was going on behind the scenes that you have no idea about. This is the 82-year-old man who's serious about this movement. So he get on planes after lecturing. Then he having meetings and he having dinner with individuals and he's talking and he's giving them instructions and he's letting them know what's going on. And he's doing a call. And he's calling these rappers out and he's calling these politicians out and they're coming to meet with him. So after he does a two or three hour lecture and after he's been on the plane all damn night, he still spends six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours after the lecture building with these brothers and building with these sisters. Now you ain't there behind the closed doors when he actually spending two or three hours talking to a brother or talking to a sister and giving them instruction and giving them guidance and hearing what's going on in their life. Then when they get out, they give each other the greetings and these brothers and sisters are many times crying and asking the minister for guidance and the brother is sitting there giving guidance to these youngsters. The same ones we criticize. These same ones who are victims are entrapped by a slave mechanism called hip hop in the entertainment business. They playing games and they controlling the black man and black woman. And we're trying, the minister is reaching out to them and pulling them out of the clutches of Satan. And he's having conversations with them. And so then as they walk out and they give the minister the greetings, somebody standing around with a camera usually say, hey brother minister, hey gang, hey Kanye, let me get a picture with y'all, let me get this picture. And they take pictures and they put them on Facebook. The gang, Kanye, and all of these different rappers, they're not looking for a photo op with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, nor is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan looking for a photo op with them. Because he spends most of his time building. He spends most of his time educating, training, and giving them advice and helping these brothers and sisters behind the scenes. But when he's in a situation where he's in a meeting with them and talking directly to them for two or three hours, dealing with certain issues that they got, when they walk out, the brothers and sisters who's around is like, let me get this photograph, let me get this picture, this is a historical moment. And so sniff sniff, the picture is taken, it goes all over Facebook, and then you silly niggas want to say it's a photo op because you're jealous and you hate me. Now as far as the young thug situation, yeah, he's wearing a hat, I got a whole bunch of them. Got a red one, got the blue ones. We got gray, we got green, all of this. Why? Because this is a nation of Islam. This is a symbol of justice, freedom, equality, Islam. That's what it's about. And everybody ain't going to be wearing no bow tie and everybody ain't joining the nation of Islam. But we all still representing justice, freedom, equality, Islam. And so when the enemy, if we can rock a Nike hat, if we can rock a Bulls hat, if we can rock a Dodgers hat, or a Washington Nationals hat, which is the so-called Jews who's running this shit. You mean to tell me we can't rep the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and let the world know, regardless of what our situation is, that we back the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? You's a jealous, punk-ass nigga. That's what you is. So what I'm saying is, is that when you see Young Thug, I don't give a shit if he's a homosexual or not. Somebody got to change him. You ain't going to do it. This is a society. This is a situation that is bred niggas and niggas. And we trying to change the condition of our people. And you silly niggas are sitting behind the scenes who ain't changing your own goddamn condition. And you're going to judge the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the FOI because we have the heart and we have the love and we have the desire and we have the reputable reputation to pull these brothers and sit them down and holler at them. So Ice Cube was there. The game was there. T.I. Killer Mike. J.T. The Bigger Figure was there. CeeLo was there. Who else is going to get to these brothers and try to pull them by their coattail and, and tell them what needs to be done? You don't know what the minister is saying to them, but you hate them. So you see a picture, and then all you want to do is tear the picture up. So y'all some busters. Ray Bond, you's a buster. Pallavi Rob, whatever the hell that means. You a buster. And don't, don't count our chips. Talking about Brother Martin and us now, we're going to get paid because they're going to see these hats. And then everybody going to want money and putting money in the PayPal. Well, damn it, we spent money to get these hats. Matter of fact, we borrowed money to buy these hats so we can get these hats in the hands of people. Why? Because we're trying to represent the nation and we're trying to show the world that we are in one common cause. We ain't got to all be Muslim, but we on freedom, justice, equality, Islam. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is calling the call 10-10-15. Now check it out. It ain't just about Young Thug. Young Thug has a following. And just like Young Thug can lead the following down a ditch, the minister can take Young Thug, change his direction, and the followers of Young Thug will end up going to the march and hearing a message that can change their life. But you don't see it like that. Y'all don't understand a chess game. Y'all don't understand a war mentality. I 
don't give a damn if Young Thug or any of them is homosexual. Can they take a punch and can they swing a punch? And some of these so-called homo thugs is more gangster than you. We don't give a damn. You can come any way you want. See, y'all sound like them damn Pharisees during Jesus' time. They was running around talking shit because the Jesus was around the sinners and the harlots and the stone that the builders rejected. See, while y'all sit there talking crazy, ain't never one of y'all, number one, got a reputation or a name to reach out to these brothers. And number two, you ain't even got no nutsack to even be around these type of dudes because you corny and you square and you a buster and you so full of whack juice that ain't nobody hearing what you got to say anyway. So really low key, you hating. But the minister is 82 years old and he comes and he calls brothers out and they show up to talk to him. And you think it's about a goddamn picture? There's information being shared. The minister is dropping bombs in their heads that at a certain time they're set to go off and we can change the paradigm that we exist in. But you don't care about the brothers. You don't care about the sisters. You just want to make mockery and laugh as if your shit don't stink. Look at man, if we pull the closet up off of y'all, if we look in y'all drawer, you'll see all kind of foolishness. You whack, you're on whack juice, and you need to stand down because you always got something to say. Now, I would be remiss in my duty as the lines out the cage, Martin F. Muhammad, Brother Philip Muhammad, if we didn't check your ass. This is what it is. You can see me when you want to see me. I love y'all. I love my people. But when y'all on some bullshit, you on some bullshit. How the hell are you going to judge the minister for talking to these people? You sitting there talking crazy about them. You judging them. You maligning them. You throwing them away. Not understanding that they're a victim of the war that we fighting. Let me explain something to you. Some of these brothers, man, was born and their mothers was on crack. And their fathers was locked up in the penitentiary. Some of these brothers, their mamas was lesbians. Their fathers was homosexuals. Some of these brothers, they was molested. Some of these brothers was turned out. They didn't have no money. They was broke. They was busted. They grew up in the projects. And so they learned how they had some talent. And they had talent. And then they got, they got a record deal. And they were surrounded by these Jewish managers, these Jewish, Jewish agents, these so-called Jewish business people and accountants. And they've been isolated. And they're getting paid off of this foolishness. Now, they're casualties of a war. We have to get to these people and bring them back to their own. And it takes one, it's, it's, it's one step at a time. But the key is, is to have a million people show up 10, 10, 15 to let America know, even if we disagree in religion, even though we disagree on our sexual behaviors, even though we might disagree on, on God or whatever the case may be, we all are one people standing up saying justice or else. But you suckers and busters is trying to work against this process and acting like the minister is trying to make money. I'm going to make another video specifically and call you suckers and busters out. Because you ain't nothing but a faggot and sissy. Because most of you suckers is out there talking crazy. You ain't with the minister and you ain't with nobody else. You sitting at home looking flabby and sick trying to play a hate on Minister Farrakhan shit. And you know what you can eat. Right? So what I'm telling you is this, man. I love you. This ain't no thuggish shit. I'm not trying to punk you. But what I'm saying is, man... At what point will niggas stop attacking other black people? Why can't we stand up and come together? Why do y'all always look at something negative? If Young Thug is on some bullshit, then who else is he supposed to meet? He's supposed to meet the minister. Al Sharpton can't get at him. Missy Jesse Jackson can't get at him. Michael Dyson, his words is too big and he talks too goddamn fast. He can't get at him. So he's chilling in L.A. Here come the gang. Now the gang got into some serious stuff. We ain't gonna get into it. But he got into some serious stuff with the undercover police. First of all, you got to ask yourself, why was the undercover police playing basketball with gangs? See, we got enemies and agents all around us. Right? And so he gets in trouble. And just so happened, when he gets in trouble, the minister is in Los Angeles and he calls for his brother. And he's in there speaking to the to, to gang face to face for two or three hours. Now, what? Should we have a press conference and tell you silly niggas what we were talking about? The minister is trying to save the lives of our people. He has a reputation of doing justice and loving his people. And you hate him because you don't understand. Y'all are the enemies. Y'all are the enemies. Because he who is without stone or sin cast the first stone. So I just wanted to say that. And I apologize for breaking Ramadan, but shit, y'all get over it. It's wartime and we war ready. And y'all are suckers, man. Y'all busted. I really want to cuss you out for real because you're sitting there making mischief. And then... You trying to throw me and Brother Martin underneath the bus talking about we trying to make some money off these hats and everything. You damn right we should get some goddamn money. So we can turn around and buy plane tickets and get with our people and defend the minister and go from city to city, state to state, trying to defend the minister and also get out with the youngsters to save their lives. 
So I ain't buying no bands, we ain't buying no tennis shoes. We taking the money that we get and reinvesting it into the movement. But you suckers and busters are such haters. We ain't telling you what to do with your wife's welfare check. Huh? We ain't telling you to do what you do with the free cheese and butter that you getting. Or when you go to the white man and you get your little punk ass check, we ain't questioning you on that. What did you have to do to get your check? Use a sucker, use a faggot, use a sissy. I said it. If you ain't got nothing to do or uh, say good about the minister, let his name taste like shit in his mouth, in your mouth, and don't say nothing. Just don't say nothing, because you whack. You an enemy against our nation. Straight up. The minister's in the highways and the byways, and he's reaching out to the people that most of y'all sit up and criticize, but you ain't got nothing for him. If you met him face to face, you wouldn't tell him to do nothing except get a job like your punk ass. Now that's it. I got one. I got some more stuff to say to y'all, but I'm not gonna hit y'all all in one time in one video. I'm just gonna spread this out a little bit because y'all on some serious whack juice. And I said it. And if you wanna holler at me, the number is 310-625-0999. All right. We was in the building. We know what the minister was saying to these brothers. Y'all don't know what the hell is going on. And you make you make our nation and you make our people look whack as hell. Because the white boys are sitting up here watching this and y'all don't even have no discipline. And you ain't doing nothing. You whack. Double, triple whack. I'll give it y'all in a minute. These hip-hop artists. Yes, sir. They started off good. Right. right. Conscious rap, right. like conscious gospel, mm -hmm. right. conscious poetry, All right. conscious plays. Yes. But then something went wrong. Absolutely. The glorification of the gun All right. killed the pig. Right. Right. How you going to say that about killing police mm -hmm. and don't think for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction we were losing it big time see and I saw what was coming so when the million man march took place they had tanks underground see the government knew exactly who was there because they had us on the government satellite the park department don't run no satellite but they knew it was more than 400,000. They couldn't bear to say that it was the largest gathering in the history of America, the most peaceful of any gathering. Nobody got arrested in the park. The mall was cleaner than at any other time in any other gathering because I had gone throughout the nation. Telling the brothers, don't bring no weapons up in there. Because if you come right, God will show you that his spirit is more powerful than your weapon. See, I'm following scripture now. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. And I knew if they came right on a Monday, gave up their jobs, gave up their school, went in their homes, those that stayed home, and tried to reconcile differences. See, Jesus paid it all right. But what did he pay? He paid the price to open the way for all humanity to reclaim our original position with God. But if he paid for your sins, then you feel, well, what the hell? He paid for mine. I just keep on doing this thing. But if the Jesus, the same Jesus that paid, is seen in the revelation coming again. But he ain't coming to teach. Said he had a sword in his hand. And the sword was dripping with blood. And he came at the head of 10,000 angels. And he warned us about a judgment. See, if he paid it all, there's no need for a judgment. But we're living in the judgment of men and nations. On that one day, they, the press came. Bless your heart. They got their positions. The niggas is going to explode today, you know. 
You know how they are. They're cut-ups. These men don't like each other. Let's get a good position to catch the slaughter. Tanks was underground. Soldiers, everybody ready. President Clinton, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go right now. Close down the Congress. Close down the Supreme Court. Close down city government. Get out of town. Because the niggas is going to act up and we got something for them. And here was the press. From early morning, 5 o'clock, when the prayer was called, they were there. And they saw the brothers coming. Philadelphia in the hood, yes, in the house. Yes, sir. New York in the house. Yes, Atlanta in the house. Yes, Savannah in the house. Yes, Mississippi in the house. Yes, they were coming from everywhere. Yes, fathers that hadn't seen their sons and sons that hadn't seen their fathers yes, saw them that day. Yes, Bishop Brookins and Jesse Jackson came up in my room and the bishop said what you gonna do with the money well that's a legitimate question but they didn't ask that for the march in 63 or 83 ain't nobody giving no report on nothing but I promised I'll have an auditing firm audit everything and I'll give a report on every dollar. Yes, sir. It's on the internet. Did I do it? Yes, sir. It's on the internet right now. My word is my bond. You are not going to punk me. I live for integrity. And if I tell you that I never call Judaism a gutter religion. Take it to the bank because I ain't afraid of a damn one of you. If I said it, I'll stand up and say, yeah, I said it. What the hell are you going to do about it? But I never said it. And for 21 years, you can't even write about me. If I do something good, yes, but he's the man that called Judaism a gutter religion. I never mentioned the name Judaism, but here's what I said. And I stand on what I said. I said that state called Israel yes, sir. has not had any peace at the time in 40 years That's right. and she will not have any peace. Right. It's 50 some years later, still. still ain't got no peace. I said she can't have peace where there's lying and stealing and murder. In using God's name as a shield for your dirty religion. Your religion ain't what you profess. Your religion is your practice. You can't call me self telling me you for Jesus and hang me the next day and I can't get justice. You practice in a dirty religion. You call yourself a jihadist, strap a bomb on yourself, and walk in among innocent people and set it off? You practice in a dirty religion. And whether you're a Jew, a Christian, or a Muslim, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And we use religion to protect our behinds 
from the crap that we do in the name of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, the prophets, and Muhammad. But you can't use Jesus to cover your behind today. You say he's coming back. I know he's coming back. But will he receive us on his return? I said to the church in Los Angeles the other day, I said, you're the bride. But you've been whoring. I'm in love with you. That's it. I'm not speaking out of hate. That's right. I want us to come clean. That's right. I want us to correct ourselves. I got some dirt on me, but I got to wash. He said, wash and be clean. I mean, all of us got to wash. But the book said, if we wash in the blood of the Lamb, our garment would come clean and it would be white as snow. But how you going to be the bride of Christ? The bridegroom coming and you whoring. You in bed with the rulers of the world. You can't say, thus saith the Lord, because you getting a buttered biscuit and a piece of fried chicken at the back door of your master. You whoring. And the garment of the church is dirty. You say you a Muslim? Right. Come on, come on. Come on. The garment of the mosque.